what the, actually the most dangerous prisoner ever in the history of the Arizona prison system yeah. is a guy called Bonsai who was in the highest security levels. And let me just fill you in on a bit about him because I have put a video out about him and I do speak about him in my Murderers, Mafia Hitmen and US Prison Tour which I do across the country. But before coming here, I've actually looked at the newspaper articles and the legal paperwork, and I've learned a lot more about him. So I can give you a much fuller version yeah. of him. His name was Robert Wayne Vickers. And when he was 19, he was sentenced to three to nine years for a Tempe burglary. Tempe is like a suburb of Phoenix, Arizona. He was first arrested in the sixth grade and he gained a reputation at the Catalina Mountain School north of Tucson for stabbing other boys with pencils and then would be convicted in 1978 of a jailhouse stabbing that added 10 to 15 years to his original sentence. So basically what came in, what happened was he'd done all of these burglaries, 12 burglaries over 13 days in Tempe. He admitted to 33 burglaries in California. So he wasn't on such a long sentence, but his cellmate didn't wake him up for breakfast one day and drank his Kool-Aid. Oh, really? <laughs> his cellmate, Frank Ponciano, and then Bonsai was so angry, he actually strangled him with a sheet and stabbed him multiple times with a shank that he'd made out of a toothbrush. Really? Yeah. Then he carved the word bonsai. Oh, his diary got notorious. <clears throat> yeah, because he misspelt it. <laughs> he spelt it. <laughs> yeah. B A N Z A I. Banzai Bob is what he carved. Unlike the Japanese war cry, bonsai with an O. Yeah. Yeah. So then the guard comes along and says, what have you done to your cellmate? Yeah. He says, well, he didn't wake me up for breakfast. I've killed him. Um, and he, the guard says, no, you've not. So he actually burned the guy's foot oh. to show the guard that he was dead and then told the guard, get this stinking expletive out of my cell. He later told a prison psychologist, Kent Spillman, that he regretted only one thing about the attack. He didn't have enough time to carve a swastika to dot the I on Panciano's body. Yeah. So this is just the beginning of stuff with him now in the Arizona prison system. So he starts to, he's making makeshift knives and bombs, attacked more than 11 prison guards. In higher security, on March the 4th, 1982, this is actually, he was on, on death row at Arizona uh, State Penitentiary in Florence for killing Frank Ponciano. Around 6.30, he's out of his cell doing cleanup chores. But then he paid a visit to his neighbor, which was another death row inmate. Apparently, his neighbor had talked some smack about Bonsai's niece. Yeah. So Bonsai had built a firebomb from her gel and an ice cream carton. And what he did was he called his cellmate to the front, yeah. threw this firebomb on him, toilet paper, set fire to him. And this guy, as he slowly burned to death, because if you've got a medical situation in prison, there's a saying you've got nothing coming. Yeah. You know, there's two death rows. There's the people who are on death row, sentenced to die, and there's people who are sick. They're just going to die. Yeah. So this guy's burning to death. The guards aren't, ain't going to do anything about that. And a number of prisoners almost died as a result of smoke inhalation in this enclosed area. Yeah. So a guard asked Bonsai if the dude was dead, and Bonsai responded, he should be. He's on fire. 
And he actually died as a result of tracheobronchial burns oh, suffered yes, from a flash fire. Yeah. 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 Afterwards, Bonsai asked investigators, did I do a good job? I told them they should have gassed me in December when they had a chance. Apparently, he'd been demanding the death penalty. Yeah. And he'd written to the governor, Bruce Babbitt, what's the hold up, fella? If you don't do it soon, I'm going to draw more blood than your cheap mocks can absorb. I'm a very impatient person. I never did like waiting. I've got a date with the devil's wife. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. He managed to escape onto the roof, got completely surrounded, and did a striptease dance and surrendered. He got onto the roof as well. He managed to escape onto a roof, yeah. Surprising he could even get up there if they knew he was like that, why they wouldn't just have eyes on him all the time. Well, they, they're going to have to do something about him, and that, that yeah. this is where it's heading. Um, he became, his legend became known beyond Arizona when he appeared in a HBO special to show how you can escape from cuffs and chains. His defense argued his violent personality was a construct of the Arizona prison system, which failed to provide him with the psychiatric help he needed as a teen and raised him in a culture of violence. He had a history of epileptic seizures and a brain disorder that resulted in violent outbursts. So, pr prosecutor called him shockingly evil. He was double jointed and could escape from any handcuffs. So he's just not what you want. He once crawled through ventilation ducts of the prison roof before being recaptured. Yeah, yeah. he was. He was. He was. He was skinny, but a macho bragger who threatened to carve the name of the judge who overturned his original death sentence onto his next victim. Several officers and inmates were stabbed, shot, or assaulted. He even they managed to escape in a court and stab a guard in an armpit and attack and cool. people in a courtroom. Yeah. Ideal. Yeah, yeah. means something. From all these, he just really loved making makeshift weapons, um, crafted from toothbrushes and typewriter parts. So what happened was, they put him in a four-cell block reserved for the most violent prisoners. And the... Warden said it's the first time in Arizona prison history we're going to build a special cell. We're going to yeah, put a shower right. in it it's like Hannibal and weld stuff. the door shut. Weld it shut. <laughs> weld the door shut, yeah. And the only time that they opened that was when they brought him out for the death penalty. Mm. And I've got some notes here about his execution. So... Did you know of him, like, sorry, just before you start that, like, were you aware of him and what he'd done when you're in the prison? Right. Like, when you go into prison. the Arizona prison system, into the jail, yeah, you hear whispers about Bonsai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so like really the bogeyman. Dumb. And you're terrified. You think, am I going to yeah, end up yeah. going somewhere with Bonsai? Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, and you only hear these little snippets and you don't hear the full yeah. story. So from Did you know what he looks like? I, I had no idea going in. Yeah, so you never know if you're going to be I'm with just, him or not. I'm just a newbie, yeah, thinking, <laughs> this, who's this Bonsai? And it was my cellmate Squeegee in the second Love year. Love the nickname. <laughs> who, but Squeegee had been arrested over 155 times in Arizona, Texas, New Mexico, all petty fences. So he knew the full story. He'd worked at the facility where Bonsai was housed. Yeah. So Bonsai spent 17 years on death row before his execution. His last meal was green chili burros, which are burritos with barbecue steak, French fries, ketchup, vanilla ice cream, cream soda, and a cigarette. It's a good choice, to be fair, isn't it? Yeah. Robert Wayne Vickers, um, 41, injected to death with the lethal injection. He lifted his head from the gurney as he's getting executed, smiled, nodded at relatives, including his aunt and cousin. Hello, everyone, he said. See you later. Moments later, he mouthed, time to go to his family members. Deadly chemicals began flowing to, into his veins at 3.03 p.m. And he was pronounced dead two minutes later. Jesus. Yeah. So even when he went, he was still wasn't all the ticket. Like, he wasn't just saying, oh, sorry, I'm remorseful. Yeah. He's just, sorry, this is happening. 
Yeah, his brain was just wired differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you reckon he's still notorious throughout Arizona? Oh, absolutely. Anyone who goes in the Arizona prison system will hear snippets or some kind of story about Bonsai Bob. Yeah, yeah. His legend just goes on. 